Hello, welcome to the Eddie Den. I'm Spencer, and today we're teeing up some first impressions of a game that I've been wanting to check out since its initial release in 2022. With it being October and Halloween right around the corner, I figured this is the perfect time to start a cult of my own. So sit back, relax as we unpack this perfectly odd looking title. If you've missed my previous video on Diablo 4's free trial weekend impressions, then definitely check that out because in that video, I said that I hoped more publishers would release free trials of their game. And now I can't complain because Devolver Digital came through with a published title of their own. Cult of the Lamb is a devilishly charming action fuse cult simulator developed by Massive Monster and Devolver Digital. Devolver Digital is one of the most consistently interesting publishers in the indie space, and roguelikes are one of my favorite genres in indie gaming today. Devolver Digital has this knack for publishing games that simultaneously deliver on the promise of great gameplay and really unique art styles. At the Yeti Den, we've also covered a different roguelike by Devolver Digital called Loop Hero. So if you want to check out that video, also take a look at that. In Cult of the Lamb, you serve as a sacrificial lamb who defies death by making a deal with the one who waits. As the chosen vessel, you carry the cursed crown on your head, promising to build a cult in its honor while defeating heretics and cleansing non-believers. Your foes, the four bishops of the old faith, must be vanquished in the name of the one who waits. Through dungeon diving crusades, you will collect gold and forage for precious resources in order to return to your temple of ruin, while harnessing powers through your ascending cult. Your flock depends on you to lead them through managing their time and their resources you'll decide the direction of your cult's technical progress. So this compelling roguelike cult simulator boasts that addicting gameplay that encourages death while rewarding persistence. Great roguelikes make you eager to jump back into an enemy infested dungeon for the chance to collect even more rare items or skill power ups. My first time sitting down with the game lasted for a two hour session with Cult of the Lamb holding my attention the entire time. The densely packed opening hours introduce a slew of mechanics, yet I never felt overwhelmed. One of the reasons why I bounce off of farming simulators is that the onboarding process, it can feel really tedious and slow and not entirely console optimized. Never once though did I feel like that with Cult of the Lamb. It never felt like it was doing too much for a controller to handle. In progressing through the main quest, you'll need to sharpen your combat abilities as your character gains access to a bevy of powers, weapon choices, and unique character builds. The bosses that you will face present challenging movesets, forcing you to return if you cannot overcome them in your first time facing off. If you've ever played games like Enter the Gungeon, Moonlighter, or even the recently released Cocoon, you'll have a good sense for how the combat kind of feels. When amassing followers, you'll recruit other poor souls who are sacrificed to the bishops of the old faith. And by recruiting them, you give them the chance to join your cult. Once they're indoctrinated, you'll feed them meals, dispose of their droppings, give them names, customize their appearance, manipulate them to obtain their devotion, 
and preach to them at your altar. I even found it weirdly satisfying looking after these strange creatures that collect in my ruined temple. Sweeping up after my followers defecated at the premises gives me a pinch of nostalgia, reminding me of the vomiting amusement park visitors in Roller Coaster Tycoon. Fortunately, beyond just tidying up, Waste can serve as fertilizer for your crops. As you tend to your flock, you'll chip away at the four bishops of the old faith, each of which guards a chain that binds your master, the one who waits. Your main quest is to liberate that eldritch horror who owns your soul. I'm sure cutting loose a being called the one who waits is a totally consequence-free decision that will have absolutely zero ramifications for the poor souls caught in the crossfire. I've really enjoyed my time with this game. If you're interested in checking it out and you have a Nintendo Switch Online account, I definitely recommend giving it a shot. It's by day, so you could put in as many hours as you want until October 31st, Halloween. So yeah, that is all the time we have today. Thank you so much for watching the Yeti Den. I will see you all next time. Bye.